it's Stas here. Cheers, happy Homebrew Wednesday. Bit of a different one today. Um, I've been talking with some of the uh, the other brew tubers about uh, giving, giving people a bit of shtick about speaking really quietly into the camera. All friendly though. Um, but uh, I thought I'd do a little how to, sh a little behind the scenes about how I process my audio. Um, so uh, and maybe uh, maybe some tips about how I get my footage off my camera into the computer and edit it up. So uh, I did a little toot. Um, so it's not really beer related, but it's brew tube related. So um, I hope you enjoy. There's uh, I've been I've been brewing, but uh, I'll save those for another day. Um, hope you're all well and. Uh, might be a bit of a long video, but hopefully you find it useful in uh, in your own special ways. So uh, until I see you next time, uh, this is Stas from Stas Brewing signing out. Cheers. Ah, enjoy. Alrighty, so uh, here's a spot I can see on my screen. A couple of tips uh, to do with uh, your videos. Here's Bruto Video. If I select. Uh, all of these just by doing this I click up on the top options there and I usually go move to album I create a new album and then call it whatever I want uh, I've got an SD card I usually put on my SD card so I'm not taking up the uh, um, space on the phone so once I've done that uh, then I uh, I won't do that now um, then I will I'm using visor here to show you my screen uh, just minimize this. I bring up smart. What is it smart switch? That's the one. That's the Samsung one, but I'm sure you can find the uh, various solutions for you guys as well. Uh, don't update. Then I go into here, click on this, and it's easy for me to then. It shows up uh, as a folder there rather than have to go through your camera because it doesn't always list it in date. I've found so just a little time saver there to uh, it creates a, a folder then you can just uh, I've got my movies here Sasperine whatever you've got there you just click and drag into um, the videos so that's a uh, and you've got pictures and videos to go there so that's just a little tip number one all right let's go to tip number two we're here to uh, talk about part two so let's say you've, you've now copied your uh, media into your folder and you find a clip which uh, the audio is quite quiet. Alright guys, we are mashed in on the coconut IPA. For example, uh, obviously it w it's best to always fix the problem before it's a problem. So, you know, make sure you speak clearly, make sure you're close to the microphone um, and you know, and that you have a reasonable quality microphone or recording device. Uh, but you know, we're home brewers. We're fairly. Uh, we don't always have access to the perfect conditions. Uh, you know, maybe your uh, the mic is on a tripod, a long way away. Maybe the kids are asleep or doing something else. You're trying to be quiet. It's late at night. Hell, I know what that's like. So. Let's talk about how we might be able to fix that. So we're going to use uh, DaVinci Resolve. That's what I use uh, to edit my videos. Uh, it's a free program. Uh, it's just in version 14. Uh, it's in beta at the moment, but they're going to use. A, a, they're going to release a full release of it sometime later this year. But it's fully functional and it's free, and it's there's still a free version as well as a paid version, which I think the paid version is now only. Three hundred dollars or a bit less than that. So anyway, it's 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 really good, and it's it was originally for color grading, but it's actually got quite a reasonably powerful uh, editor in there as well. So let's go into a, a new project. We'll come back to the templates and stuff later. So uh, let's go to our file. We're going to dra just drag it straight onto the timeline, which is going to do this nice and quick. So let's. Um, 
I'm not going to tell you, this is not a how to use DaVinci Resolve tutorial. There are much better users and tutorials out there than, than me. Uh, I might put a link to a few of them that I found really useful um, uh, down below. But yeah, I'm just going to show you what I do to try and make my videos sound good and hopefully look good. This is mainly focusing on the sound though. Um, so let's have a listen. Alright guys, we are mashed in on the coconut shy PA. Okay, so it's just a little thing. You can see here that the uh, the audio was kind of hovering right, here we are around 20 dB. Now you can see that there was a pop there. See if I can just remove that. Uh, it's just so we don't get confused. All right, guys. There it is. So um, where are we? All right, guys. That's right when I start. My camera's been doing this lately, so uh, I do apologise. Right, guys. Yeah. Right, guys. We are messed in. So you can see we're around 20 minus 20 dB. Now this is not going to be an audio guide, an audio file guide to compression and EQ and all that. Um, it takes ages to 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 figure out all that stuff. We're just going to talk about the video editing. So if we go into our channels again. I'm just I'm going to do this real quick and tell you what I'm doing. This isn't the only way to do it. There are many programs can can do the same thing. I'm going to start by applying a base roll off, also known as a high pass filter. So I'm just going to it just cuts off the low rumbles of the sounds, often wind or ro low rumbles of pumps or uh, something going on and I just find that uh, it kind of helps get a more even tone to the voice but when, when you when you're dialing in your EQ listen to the sound of your voice and see how much low end you can remove before you start changing the sound of the uh, uh, your, your voice if it sounds like you're talking over the phone for example All right, guys. do this that's obviously too much. So you just kind of got to figure out. Uh, let me do it about right. All right, guys, we are mashed in on the coconut shy PA. Yeah, about two two hundred uh, hertz is probably a little high. So we just pull this down a little bit. We're just trying to remove all the low end that's going to mess up our compression, which is step two. Um, we go into dynamics. I'm just going to put on a cheap and nasty compressor we're just gonna just gonna uh, here we go All right, guys we are messed in on the and the, the big one here is the makeup gain we want to just pump this up about 10 DB coconut shy PA. so All right guys we are messed in on the coconut shy PA. so this is our audio coming in and this is our master channel coming out and look at the difference between the two Alright guys, we are mashed in on the coconut shy PA. Okay, so that's that's pretty good. We can kind of bump this up a little bit to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Alright guys, we are mashed in on the coconut shy PA. But you want to be a little bit careful with the uh, compression because if you do it too much and you squish it, for those who don't know, compression is basically taking the full uh, frequent or dynamic range of the signal and you're kind of bringing up the quiet bits and you're lowering down the loud bits and you're kind of squishing it um, so the dynamic range is reduced which is which is great for you know making things uh, louder but if you do it too much All right, guys. you we end up with this on the coconut shy PA. so we'll just like really smash this alright guys we are mashed in on the coconut shy PA. So you can hear that's like it sounds really, really boxy. It's a bit, bit too much. Um, so you just, just play around with it. And you'll, you'll find you'll use your ears. You know, you'll, you'll find something that works for you. Once we've done that, we're going to whack on a limiter as well, just in case we have any volume spikes. It just stops the volume peaking a little too much. All right, guys, we are mashed in. This is, this is obviously an extreme compression thing, but anyway. This will help. Now, you might be thinking, oh my god, I've got to do this for every video. Is that what you're telling me? That sounds like an awful lot of work. You could do it that way, or 
let me show you another thing. Let me, let me show you a, what I mean by templates. So, if I go into Stas Brewing, my uh, folder with all my videos, most of my videos, you can see I've got a Homebrew Wednesday template. Let's have a look at this. So I don't want to save that. So, let's have a look at what's in here. Go to my edit page. Oh, my intro is already um, loaded up, ready to go. Sweet. What else have we got? Look at my media tab again. This is not how to use DaVinci Resolve. This is just showing you the things that I've done to try and make my Homebrew Wednesdays and other videos easier, quicker to get out and more consistent and sound better. Okay, here I've got text. Um, you can see in the preview here, why am I pointing to the screen? You can't see what I'm pointing at. Um, I've got my text with drop shadows. It's got a fade in and a fade out. Um, it's the right. It's kind of the right size. I can always adjust all these, but it's all the little things that you need to do, like select text, change text color, drop shadow, move it around. I've already done that, and I've saved that as a preset. Um, so that's, I can just click and drag into, I can just click this and drag it into here, and all of a sudden I've got text. I can then move it around. Oopsie daisy. Um, I can move that around to wherever I want, and extend it out. Yeah, you know, again, you guys know how to video edit. Uh, and I've also got this one, dang, my, my end title. I can just click and drag it to the end. It's always the same length, which makes it really easy to do your videos. Please subscribe here. That's why it's not in the middle of the screen. I've deliberately left room for those. So then, all my other footage goes into my media tab. And if you look here, let's, let's have a look at the tracks we've got got my intro and my music. My music channel doesn't have any EQ or dynamics because my music's already compressed. You don't want to compress something twice. Um, so if you look at the uh, audio channel for the raw footage, which is coming straight off the camera, let's have a look at the post processing that we've got. So if I double click here, no, oh, I saved this before, that's a pain in the butt. Okay, so I'm going to apply my roll-off. Um, my roll-off here, so it's automatically going to apply this base roll-off. Uh, and then if I go down to my dynamics, I've kind of fine-tuned something that I find works for me. I'll tweak it if I feel it needs tweaking, but it generally works, uh, gets a, a consistent sound. Uh, so that means that any footage that I drop in uh, let's just drop the Coconut IPA video that I was just talking about here. So it's pretty easy for me to uh, just kind of overlap these just a little bit. And let's just quickly uh, there and there. So we get a nice fade in. All right, guys, we are most in on the Coconut IPA. Okay, so this should already have the. Yeah, it does. Uh, Guys, we are most in on the coconut. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's not too bad. We can also look at the waveform here. We can you know make it the whole clip a little bit louder. Now this is actually making the the volume of the clip a little louder. The other way we can do that is by clicking on the inspector, going to audio, and making the volume a little louder here. So this is IPA. So straight away, there's a big difference. Guys, we are most in on it. So, uh, there you go. EQ, bass roll off, compression, and uh, limiters. Uh, I know that Premiere does it. I'm sure that there are other video editing softwares that do this also. If you don't have a video editor that does, uh, there is a long route which you can export the audio to a, something like Audacity. You can treat the audio there and re import it and sync it up. That sounds like a pain in the butt. You know, I use DaVinci Resolve, as I said, I've been using it for probably six six months, maybe longer, I think. I think I actually started using DaVinci Resolve when I started the channel. So I've been using it almost a year now. 
uh, and version 14 is way better than version 12.5, which is the last official release that's not in beta. The playback engine's really good. I used to have to transcode everything to a specific format, otherwise it wouldn't play back properly. And, but now that's that's all that's all fine. It, there's still a few little bugs here and there that I'm finding, but uh, it's it's actually quite quite good. So uh, yeah, I hope you found this useful, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. So this is Stas Stasbury signing out.